Fish are delicious. I mean, I really like fish. There are at least a dozen recipes for fish, and hunting them is an important part of human culture all over the world. Fish are also dumb. I, I mean, they, they seem to be easy to catch. Oh, what's this? A fresh and convenient meal dangling in front of my, uh-oh. Hey guys, let's swim in a group. It'll confuse predators and each of us will have a less likely chance of, uh-oh. I've been reading about them and they're actually not as dumb as they seem. If they happen to survive capture, they learn from it and are better at avoiding capture in the future. Some build and remember dominance hierarchies. Others know how to smash clams against rocks to get the insides. You know, they just seem to be as intelligent as any other animal. Shouldn't really come as a surprise. I don't know, maybe we just don't notice because they're under a bunch of water. And they always have a stupid expression. A good chunk of the vegetarians I've met eat fish. That's how little respect they get. Anyways, none of that matters. The point was, fishing has gotten too easy. Not that being a fisher is easy, mind you. It's just that now people can take fish out of the water faster than the fish can reproduce, which can hurt the population. Less fish means less fish reproducing and their productivity can decline, which ultimately means less profits for fishermen the next time. And this is the problem we're here to look at in this series. How to make sure a population of fish is used sustainably so you can use it forever. One of the most important problems for the long-term use of a fishery is the problem with open access conditions on a common pool resource. A common pool resource is a resource like fish or trees. It's rivalrous, meaning if one person takes some fish, it prevents someone else from taking that same bunch of fish. So luckily, fish is renewable. You can take some and the fish will reproduce. Take too much though and their productivity might go down since there's less fish laying eggs and reproducing. If there's only one person fishing a particular stock of fish, they're probably not going to take so much that they're hurting the stock for the next season or for five seasons from now. If they do, they're only hurting their own access to the fish in the future. Better to put in less effort now and always ensure there's something for later. But the other trait that makes it a common pool resource is that it's difficult or costly to stop other people from using it, right? Especially in the ocean, it's pretty hard to draw a territory around a certain body of water and then police and enforce it too, at least compared to land. So multiple people using the resource is pretty much always the case for fisheries. If one person in the group notices they're all fishing too much, that person could try to take less to preserve the stock for the future. But if they do, someone else will probably just take more or other fishermen will enter the fishery to take that extra share. An individual working alone has an incentive to fish less now to preserve fishing for later, but an individual in a group can't do that because someone else can just use what he's leaving. This is the problem with open access. They call it the tragedy of the commons. It's incorrectly named because it's not necessarily a problem with common pool resources. A group of people can work together and behave like an individual solving the problem. The problem is when it's treated as open access. Open access meaning there are no rules or nobody is following the rules. So people are just racing to take as much as they can. Working as hard as they can trying to get as much fish for themselves, they're actually hurting themselves compared to if they were working as a team. This is why they call it a tragedy. Each each fisher is only thinking about themselves hurting the fishery as a whole, but ironically, they're hurting themselves too. This has been a bigger problem over the last hundred years or so as the demand for fish exploded from the population boom. Meeting the new demand is new technology that makes fishing cheaper. There's GPS navigation to plot out and find fishing spots easily, and sonar to target the specific places where they are in the water. They have these deep sea factory ships, which are called factory ships because they put the factory on the ship. Instead of trying to keep the fish fresh and bring them on to shore for processing, they process them right away and then freeze them, all while still on the ship. It allows them to go out farther and stay out for weeks. These kinds of boats can exacerbate the open access issue. Fishermen fishing close to where they live, the inshore or artisanal fishermen if you like, can see the benefits of working together and might form a little fishing government relatively easily. They know if they don't, they will be in a bad way in the future, hurting themselves and their children and their neighbors. But fishers with large factory ships, the offshore or large-scale commercial fishers, their ships can travel farther and deal with bad weather easier so if they deplete a stock, they can move on to another without being affected as much. In this series, we're going to look at management strategies to preserve fishing long term. In the next video, we're going to look closer at the problem with open access and find out what is the optimal amount of fishing effort for long term profits.